welcome to Concrete Mom Scrap More with Brenda. I'm Brenda and we're playing with more traditional blocks. Um, this is going to be called, this one's called Hidden Wells. It's known by a bunch of different names, but it has a bias edge when you're finished, when you do the traditional piecing. So we're going to make sure this is dressed up and oversized a little bit so we can trim it down with some um, outside sashing right so this is going to be kind of a fun quick little block to do but first before we before we get into the actual sewing of this i want you to meet chantelle from wildberry quilting now her youtube channel and link is going to be in the show notes below um it's a cute little channel she's just starting out so if you'd be kind enough to go over there check her out hit that subscribe button for her and tell her that conquering mount scrapmore sent you that would be such a lovely little surprise for her now the other thing that's in the show notes of course is the zoom link for our monthly sew alongs from now until the end of december right and all those zoom links are going to be you know there for for a while right until you know yeah it's we have lots of fun we gather once a month i usually run it from 9 a.m to 5 p.m mountain standard time because i'm in alberta canada and we just gather and sew and you don't just have to sew what i have shown you you sew you bring to the table what inspires you and what kind of things you you like to do and if you don't want to talk you don't have to talk it's okay right i mean I, we know some people are kind of shy but it's all good. You can sit and just chat and listen. If you haven't got a quilting project that you're working on, bring your knitting or your crocheting. It's all good. We just hang out together. It's a lot of fun. The Facebook group also has the, the typical sharing of pictures and comments and asking questions and all the rest of that stuff. But we're also now making use of those virtual rooms for a 24-7 virtual sew date for anybody that's part of face, that Facebook group. There's also a lady that is starting a scrap exchange for the potato chip block. And that's up on the featured part of the Facebook group. So you can go check that out if it's still there. Or if she's called it an end or whatever. But they're going to have a... They have my blessing. I am not getting involved with that. But they have my blessing. And hopefully they'll have a lot of fun doing that. So come on in. Let's get to this fun sewing. Okay, so this is hidden well. So what we do is we take three very bright, you know, with the fabric strips, right? I mean, I've got some, you know, crazy check going on here, little prints, and then kind of a, it looks like a stripe curve thing. So what we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do, you always do the hardest part first, is you sew them together with a scant quarter inch. Very simple. Now I'm going to put the orange in the middle because... I think that would work best. Okay. Oh my God. And these are from uh, two and a half strips that I had laying around from a leftover jelly roll. And I do have a leader ender project today that's a little different, but it'll be fine. There we go. In a way, because you know, like it's whatever color you're working in, right? Like, whatever you got left over, you can basically kind of put them together and be done. No, there we go. I'm gonna pull that up. Okay, I'm gonna run a little leader ender through just so I can move out some stuff here. Okay, yeah. Leader enders are nice to have as a side project. And I'm still working on when this is being filmed. I am still working on orphan block challenge. I've learned a lot from that orphan block challenge. So now you can finger press this very quick. Okay, that's kind of loud colors, aren't it? But it's it works. It works. Now I'm not, you know, this is not 
precise. Like if I was doing a lot of them and I was going to make a massive quilt, I would, you know, make sure I iron them all good, you know, nice and flat. But for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to flip them over and we're going to work with them this way. So now once we've got them sewn flat, I, I don't have, because of my sewing machine and the feed dogs and the way the foot sits on the feed dogs, I don't have problems with curving uh, edges, right? I don't have problems with the curving edges because I have, this, this works very well for me. Um, so I'm going to start from the same side again. And you're not supposed to, you know, if you're, if you have, um, my plate on here is just a little hole where the needle goes up and down because that's the original plate. And then there was another plate designed later with, uh, for zigzagging, the zigzag attachment on this machine that had a mouth like all the modern machines do. Now, if your machine has a mouth, like a slot that, you know, is, is like wide, then you need, then you would need to go the other way, right? If you're just working with a tiny hole, and you're working on a vintage machine, yeah, chances are you can just do this and you can just sew them together. Like you don't have to think about going one direction and then the other direction. So, and I know that's different from what most people think, but it's because I'm on a vintage machine. Right? Okay. Oh, okay. Now another leader ender goes through. Okay. I'm going to stack this stuff. Okay. Here. Okay. Now, again, you do the same thing. Just finger press this out of the way. You know. Some people, what they do is they get this to their ironing board and they lay a ruler, like a yardstick. Yeah, a yardstick. And then they line it up to the yardstick and they press it with a little bit of steam, nice and flat, right? And then you have that perfect flat edge. So now, I'm just gonna move this out of the way for a sec. And I'm gonna get rid of this design board. Cause we gotta do some cutting. So now, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut off, oops, you're going to cut off the salvage and line it up. Yes, it's a good six and a half inches, so my quarter inch is right on the money. And now you're going to go in six and a half inches, just like that. And you're going to cut some blocks. Actually, you can cut the entire strip. Actually, that's what we're going to do. We're going to cut, cut the entire strip. Because you're going to see how this, these, you make two blocks at a time. This is why this block is so loved. Because it is a very fast, fun block. Okay. And what I don't use in the block, then I have as a... Uh, a six and a half inch rail or six and a half inch square rail block, so that's fine. Okay. Okay, last one. Oh, yeah, so I could get another one. Okay, that's six. That's okay. And this, I'm just going to leave that together for now. Oops, not throw it on the floor. Oh, well, we can stay there for now. Okay, so. You're going to take this and put it on point. And you're going to go from point to point and cut like that. Okay? So you're going to make two piles of these until you have, and you're always going to start with the green on top. Okay? There. And there. Okay. 
I have uh, just a little uh, metal um, hinge right under my ruler here, so I'm not really thrilled with how this is. <laughs> Oops, that goes like this. And that goes like, oh, that's, I did it, cut them wrong. Oh no, wait a minute, did I cut it like this? Yes, I did. <gasps> okay, well, green is on top. I cut them wrong. Oh, no, I didn't. It's okay. I'll just do it this way then. Okay. The green is like this. I cut two of the... I think I cut those two wrong. That's okay. I could just correct it now. It's fine. The green is on top. I twisted it the wrong way. And I'm going to twist it the wrong way again. See, this is why <laughs> you do do them. But you know what? You make it work. And I've just cut them again wrong. This is why you, you end up with a bunch of different blocks. Okay, this must end up like this, where this is, okay, yeah, all right. So I cut two wrong and I cut the other four correctly. I got six off that strip, ay, ay, ay. okay. So like this, like this, and like this. I will make a block out of these. Don't worry about it. I, I won't waste those. And I'll, but I'm going to show you what we're going to do with these. So what we're going to do, <laughs> not everybody does this right. And this is where you have a bunch of people going, oh no, she cut it wrong again. So when you're sewing them, that's how you're going to sew them. Okay? Now the green one will look very different, but it all came up out of the same strip, right? So you get this all lined up nice and neat okay and get that lined up nice and neat there we go yeah i might have just created yet another work of loss but that's okay I'm going to get this off. Okay. There we go. Now, the other one is like that, like that, like that, and like that. Okay, so you're going to tip it like this, and you're going to sew it like this, right? Just like you would a half square rectangle, or half square triangle, or quarter square triangle, sorry. Quarter square triangle. Now. There we go. Let's see what we've got over here when we take this block and we put it we lay it out so you could put this together just like this right and you would have a nice block right I mean let and we're gonna do and that's what we're gonna do I just don't think I have enough uh, edging to put on it but we'll do it we'll run that quickly through so you can see the block So basically, a strip, you can make three blocks, but one is not going to have a cross in the middle, but that's okay. Like, I don't know. You could take a whole bunch of the strips, do a whole bunch of these strips, and just turn around and sew them randomly together to get to make these blocks too, right? I mean, that would work. That would work really well. Okay, now, on these, do the pink one first. We're going to open them up. Oops, open them up. And sew them just like a four patch, right? Now, I'm gonna nest them this way. There we go. There we go. Now we 
get to the middle, I have a little uh, chain stitch there that I want to keep. Okay, I'm going to go flip it that way. Okay, so I have a little chain there that I want to just clip so I can get a really good nesting on my on my blocks. Okay, now this is the one with the green in the middle, the green check in the middle. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to press them down. This is like this, it lays nice and tight. Yeah. show you this block next okay so this block goes together like this if I cut all three like I cut three wrong and then I cut three the other way I could still make this block I would still have a block I could make right so you don't have to if you're gonna mix them all up you, you just mix them up right you don't have to don't be so precise don't like start spreading about well they all have to have crosses in the middle no they don't no they do not and I'm just going to snip that now while I'm thinking about it. And... There. Yeah, last bit. There we go. Now... So I have made three totally different blocks from that one with the fabric, those three widths of fabric strip. Let me get this last one off the machine and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Hang on. Okay. Oops. Flip it over like that. There. Now. So, and they are all cute. They Basically, they're all cute little blocks, right? I'm only going to take one to show you how to, how to do this. You're, you're going to take this and you're going to square this up best you can just by trimming off those dodgers. Now you can trim them off with a ruler if you want or you can, you can snip them with a scissor. It's up to you. The scissor for me, because I'm not doing hundreds of these, probably a little faster. So, and I tend to go a little deep at an angle when I'm snipping. So that's okay too. Now, on the back, they swirl. These, these will swirl, so you want to press that open. And what happens is this will lie flat, these will lie flat. Now, the only problem with this block, because it is cute, it is just adorable. This is all biased edge, right? So, we can either, you know, straight stitch around it or we can put sashing around this block, right? Because right now this block measures eight inches unfinished, right? So if I wanted to make an eight and a half inch block, this is, you know, I would have to add some sashing on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the right side of the fat sashing together and I'm putting the bias on the bottom. Right, so this goes face down. <laughs> there we go. There. And I'm just going to lay this down. And I'm not pulling, I'm just steering. That's all I'm doing. I'm not doing anything weird, funky, anything like that. I will get to the end and snip just like so. Okay. And run another meter ender through. There's some cute little cotton things that, cotton blocks that I found, and they're all almost the same size, so I'm cheating a little bit with sashing, but that's okay. 
Okay. So this, now I'm just going to gently push this up, and I'm not stretching this. Okay. So now we take the next one, and we lay it across, start it, line it up so it's at the top, and line it down. No pulling, no easing, mostly steering. That's the action you're looking for, is steering at. Okay. There we go. There. Okay, get another one of these leader enders. So here we go. <laughs> now we're going to take this and bias is always on the bottom. Okay, last side. These leader enders are a little bit longer than I'd like, but oh well. It's something I gotta get, it's a chore I gotta get done, so. Putting sashing on, and I don't have any more four patches cut, so. I'm gonna be watching that for a while. <laughs> so many of those blocks. Oh my goodness. Okay. And that's what you have left, and that can go in your one and a half inch strip. Or you string in. Oh, and I'm out of. <sighs> I'm out of bobbin. Oh well, we knew that was happening to you today. I'm out of bobbin. At least I didn't go miles and miles and miles of chain piecing. I found out I was at the end. I'm just going to sweep that out. At the end of the day here today, I'm going to wash this brush out. Because this brush probably needs a good wash. Good wipe down. Now I have my stitches set really high. That's why I'm getting away with red and blue thread. <laughs> On white. So my, I can set my machine to make 30 stitches an inch. And then... We have no, uh, you can't see those, those, the stitches. You can't see the stitches that are being made. Okay, so here we go with that. And one more, one more. There we go. So we'll get to our, I'm going to trim this now. This block now reads, it measures nine and a half, almost 10. So what I can do now is I can trim this down to nine and a half and have it go into my orphan blocks and be part of the other normal sizes that quilt blocks are supposed to finish to. Because basically I put a coping strip around here, but what that coping strip does is stabilize our bias edge. So. Let's get to our ta-da moment. Okay, so our ta-da moment is with that, that those three strips of width of fabric, we were able to make one block, two blocks, and the oops block. 
The oops block still looks great. I think it still worked. I did I did find some scrap fabric, some bind, and I haven't trimmed these yet to the eight and a half inch size, but or nine and a half inch size that we're gonna make these into because they're just a little bit over. But this is what coping strips strips can do for a block, especially on bias, right? You sew it with the bias on the bottom. And then all of a sudden it looks, you know, it looks pretty good. And I did find some really adorable bunny fabric for this one. Now, these are also, they look great. If you took a bunch of different strips and to make a quilt, you could make this as eclectic or as fun as you want. So, I mean, you know, the fact that these two blocks, other than the fact that there's crosses, they don't even look like they came from the same strip unless you know what you're doing. So or you were able to see this and see that they all came out of the same strip set. So I hope you give this one a try. This has been like a lot of fun today. And you know, yes, you do, if you make mistakes, you just keep going with it. You just, you do something else with it. And they all look pretty, including the one that I oopsed on. So I hope that you have an absolutely amazing week ahead. And until we made it meet again, I hope you stay well and take care. Okay, bye. My husband and I would love to thank you for all of the amazing people that we have met along this crazy YouTube adventure that we've been having. Uh, we do free speaking engagements too. So if you're part of a guild and they're looking for you know, people to talk and, you know, and chat with, you know, in their uh, monthly meetings. Tell them that I'm doing free ones just to help the guilds out because it's been a tough time for the guilds as well. You know, share, like, and subscribe with your friends, you know, make sure that they're, you know, they, they, they get the word out on us. That's, I mean, that's the best way you can do to help us out. So until we meet again, I want to thank you. Okay, goodbye.